part of the risks that we might be thinking about would be starting one more business together this year. True. So. Uh, <laughs> 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 Let's go home. Start your credit charity today with Chime. Sign up only takes two minutes and does not affect your credit score. Get started today at chime.com backslash WT9. That's chime.com backslash WT9. Welcome back to Wild Till Nine, hosted by your favorite fiance, Jeremy, and favorite absolute delight. And you too, on February 3rd at insert merch URL here, can also be an absolute effing delight. If we had our things together, we would have a link for you that would send you a reminder, but we don't. But fortunately, we have a lot of faith in you. <laughs> we have a lot of faith in you to utilize whichever calendar app of your choosing is your favorite. Um, and we'll also um, uh, incentivize you by saying we weren't um, sure how many to order and we think we might have not ordered enough. So best of luck. So anyways, the blanket and the new Delight uh, crew neck are going live on again. The, the new insert, what crew neck? The new, the new absolute. Okay. Also, I want to give you a little tour. Okay. So on the front, we've got- I was going to say, are you going to give a, a yeah, visual yeah, tour? We've got a visual tour. Okay. So on the front, black crew neck. I know the blanket is like very colorful. And so I know that that's not everyone's vibe. Also, like I'm a colorful decor person, but I'm a really neutral clothing wearer, which mm. I feel like is probably just a little more universally favored. So black crew neck, big fan, always soft. You know, I don't make things that are not soft. So like and then dark, bland, and, and, and black on the outside and yes. colorful on the inside. Yes. That is basically- my like aesthetic. If they, if they cut you open, yes. like what are those like TikToks? That they, is it cake? Yes, it's rainbow cake confetti. with glitter inside. It's confetti. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so glitter it's like, that gets into the floor, uh, onto the carpet, into, into the, the blankets. The thing is, yes. if you put it through the washer mm -hmm. several times, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. never coming it's out. It's never coming out. Um, Jeremy consistently just has a piece of glitter at him at all times. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I, yeah. So we've got delight on the front because obviously we as the Tillies are all delights confirmed and proven. And then on sleeve, because I mean, this is just like the real, the real deal is uh, it says an absolute effing delight, but it actually says the F word, but there's a little star where the U is. So you can uh, also, if like that's offensive, you can just roll the sleeves up and then it's immediately gone. And, and, and by the way, if it is offensive, you could also fuck off. Yeah, that kidding. too. I'm kidding. That too. Um, you know, if that's offensive, they're not listening to this podcast. Realistically, they're not listening to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. And if they can't wear it in public, then uh, get new friends. Then yeah, get new friends. I mean, but uh, I, I understand that sometimes for um, you know the traditional adults, aka our parents' generation, that that might be offensive. Yeah, I don't and see our parents wearing this anytime soon. No, 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 no. Imagine yeah. Gail in this. I the, the, no, no, no. I, no. Yeah, imagine no. Donna in this. Oh, imagine Donna. I don't think I've ever seen. Have you seen Donna in a hoodie? I feel like Donna's not a hoodie wearer. No. She's more like a shawl wearer. She's, oh, she's a big shawl wearer. Big poncho fan. Big poncho fan. Loves a poncho. Yeah. <laughs> loves um loves a cardigan. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. She's a she's a big fan. I um uh want to congratulate you mm -hmm. and us, really. Uh this we were supposed to film this two days ago on our one month anniversary of the engagement. I it um Oh yeah, two days ago. Yeah, that would have been. Yeah, would have been one month. Of Did you guys clock that? Did everyone yeah. just see her go? Mm, she didn't believe me. No, no, I just didn't know what day it was today. Right. I'm a little lost. Like the fact that January is like two thirds done is not okay in my brain. And I'd like to point out that the Adderall shortage of 2023 is still up very much alive. So I'm not sure what day it is either. Truly, I haven't paid attention to a thing since last time you guys saw me. I want to congratulate you for manifesting a mostly brunette fiance. This is a this is a win. This is a this is a dub for Team Brunette and Team Fiance Jeremy. T team Natural Hair Lauren. Team Natural Hair Lauren. I I, I, have, I don't even remember what your actual natural hair color looks like. In fact, I'm not even sure if I've ever seen it. I you say this is it, but I don't know if I can believe don't that. Don't know really either. Do you see this? What is that? Oh no, was that a spill? Did you see me? Just, was that a spillage? Just. Just, I've really gotten Jeremy on the Celsius and Alani New train and- I'm more of a Celsius than Alani New kind of guy, I gotta be honest. And I would love for you to stay that way. Cheers to Florida. Cheers to Florida, who just recently won $82 million in Celsius lawsuit fee or yeah. uh, wins. So I was gonna say, <laughs> it'd be great if they could hook us up with the sponsorship, but uh, realistically they've got some bills to pay. They have some bills to pay. And also they do, they do send, between like them and Alani New, we really do stay quite stocked. Well. I would say they should send something to me, but then sending something to you basically means they're half mine by, by default. So right. keep it up, Celsius. Right. Appreciate right. you. Right, right, right. But this right. peach vibe is a vibe. Peach vibe is a vibe. And my new favorite, Alani New, is the juicy peach. It tastes like a, f do you know what a fuzzy peach candy is? Of course. I, you kidding? Oh, you do. 
Oh, it's Swedish berries. It's Swedish berries that they don't have here. A Swedish in fish? This. No, no, no. It's a Swedish berry. Yeah, but Swedish fish is without question superior. No, absolutely not. Also, how can you say that without having, knowing what a Swedish berry is? How can you say that as if you own Sweden? How can you say that knowing that we have Latvians who are arguing for the Latvian fish? <laughs> what? <laughs> In my mind, those countries are near each other, but they're probably not, right? Latvia and Sweden? Yeah. Just as close as Portugal is to being inside of Spain. Which is pretty close. So let me see. How far How far do we think? Okay, let's see how far. Uh, For, but between Latvia. Sweden and Latvia? Yeah. Uh, What's your guess? What's your guess? Well, between, well, I think, Latvia. I think the Nordic region and Latvia in general aren't that far off well, from each other. Well, Latvia's population is 1.9 million. Turn up. Okay, Latvia, okay, wait. I okay, would wait. say how do I, how do I under a thousand miles over 500. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, but how do I get but there? To, to a degree, I think that's, a, that's like half of Europe. Just Google distance from yeah, you're right. Sweden to Latvia. Sweden to Latvia distance. And then I'm gonna, you know, this is nautical miles. Quite close to be honest. How so close? there is the Baltic Sea in between. Okay. <laughs> but you could walk there in 91 hours. To drive 16 hours and 37 minutes, I think that that means that there's probably some kind of like overwater ferry or 16 something. 16 hours, yeah. Um, hey, by takes... train. Okay, wait, how do, how do, uh, what about flying? It's really not that far, 666 kilometers. Well, that's not a thing. Which My, is please, not that many miles. Let's, let's do the, the system that we Americans love. Thank you. Six, okay, wait. Six. But it's definitely less than 500. I will. No, this is interesting for no one. Um, uh, 413 miles, that's okay. your conversion. Great. Not that far. Not that close. Not that close. But not that, but not that far. No, but like I think about how many miles I drove over 300 miles to get to Diggy. And you would drive 300 more? And I would drive 300 more. Diggy. I was thinking of the song 500 I miles. <gasps> I forgot to mention that there are matching dog bandanas um, for the pups and pets of the Tillies. Yeah, um, don't, don't be pettist. Don't be pettist. No, I know. I'm so sorry. The bunny. Uh, the only thing is, is that the smallest size, which I wasn't able to change or make any smaller is not that small. So like this bandana will be more of a cape if you have a small dog, like a chihuahua or something. Now, but if I had a pet reptile. Yes. Could I just tie it twice? Arguably, size-wise, yes. Graphic-wise, no. What it's, do you mean? It's, it's a matching graphic to the blanket. So there's a big- So you're saying that leopard, like leopards, <laughs> are, you saying, are you saying lizards can't wear blue? Lizards can absolutely wear blue. All I right, think so a lizard would look incredible blue. And, and if we don't receive a photo I of a lizard in one. the bandana, please. I want one and then I want one creature that isn't typically a house pet, but someone's made it one. Like, our, in, like a lemur or something? A lemur would be great. Love, um, love a lemur. Uh, what about a- Ooh, a possum. You and your possum thing. Uh, I follow a possum, uh, possum on Instagram named Mushroom and he is so cute. I just don't think that, I, I gotta be honest, possums shouldn't have Instagrams. That is pettist. <laughs> that is absolutely pettist. Ah. So there's also the matching pet bandana and it is so adorable. I was so sad. So I'm doing the photo shoot today for the merch, which Jeremy bailed on. So when you see only me in the photos of the merch today- I the bailed blanket, on it. I just have like a date with my couch. Jeremy bailed on the photo shoot today. So when you see just me in the photos, this is why. And the peer space that I'm shooting at was not pet friendly. It was so sad. And so I was thinking That's about bringing our cuddle clone of Moose, whose name is Goose. Do it. To the shoot. But do it. I, no, I want to do photos. We'll just do photos at home with Bubbies in the bandana. And then I'm also sad because we don't have Diggy to do photos with either. So we'll do a reshoot later on. What we'll if we do, just, what if yeah, we just, we'll do a reshoot. What if we just imposed him into it? Like to superimpose Diggy, like- My Photoshop skills are good and I could impose Diggy into many photos, but I don't think my Photoshop skills are good enough that actually, if there's a photo of the bandana- Just use iPhone and just hold him. No, and move okay. Him. That's got, hold that, that need, that's got some improvements that could be made. It's not bad for like automatic, like 0. 0.2 seconds yeah. of like a selection. It's not bad. Yeah. It could be better. I, all I'm saying is that by the time that we're done with this podcast, yeah. I bet we'll be able to revisit this conversation and mm -hmm. go, little did we know. Little did we know. Yeah. So I- uh, God, women will never be able to trust a dick pic ever again. Are you kidding? Also between FaceApp and Facetune and this like select situation. Yeah, there's there's no chance. Dudes are gonna start shopping their weens. Oh, you don't think that there are already dudes on Facetune elongating and widening wieners? 
stop everything we had to talk about today. This is where we're going to start. <laughs> Not only do I think so. Yeah, hundred percent. What do you think the, like, is there, okay. Okay, also the, the easiest and most original trick in the book to make anything look longer and like, I've done this before too, to make myself look a little taller. Like if someone doesn't shoot the angle low enough, right? To make oh, your legs look Are you look kidding longer? me? The amount of times that we've been out in public, I'm wearing jeans so tight that they already make and my I'm ass like, fat. drop that ass you to You asked me grounds. to army crawl and shoot Lower. from- You're like, hey, no, no, below my ankles, below my ankles. Lower. Below my ankles. I gotta look tall. Yeah. I gotta look tall, make Meanwhile, me look long. as a tall guy, I want you to get on a ladder. And shoot down. It's not great for photos. We really have to like settle for a middle ground. It makes and, neither and of us look, look like, yeah, complimentary. It's yeah, not, not great. great. Um, but yeah, you can change the like vertical skew of a photo and it like tilts it back essentially. Of course. Well, also remember a lens is a circle. It's not flat. And so wieners are probably be, have been being, have, have been elongated for a long time. But now you can literally just take like your finger and drag it down to pull the wiener down longer. I, I got to. I almost want to take. Okay. Well, <laughs> for science, maybe, my own, may, and then okay, just like okay. give like, and then it will do. You know. Okay. Last, oh, last oh, week. Oh, oh. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Last week we did the apple frog challenge. Yeah. This week, I'll Is Photoshop wieners, my wiener. Wiener face. You Photoshop tutor? your boobies, and then we'll see who does a better job. Or you know what would be good too is that if we had like four of the same wiener that started with right, and I could face tune a bunch of them into different sizes. And then we have to figure out which wiener is yours. Like, which is the natural wiener? Well, I, I I, would think that I would know what my wiener looks like. I don't think you would. I think it would. I don't think you would. I think that if I changed it three times in like little different ways for each one, so they all looked a little bit different, I bet that you wouldn't be you able to You think know. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. One, challenge accepted. <laughs> Two, okay, I'm genuinely curious now. Is there ever a time when it's okay to Photoshop a nude. To Photoshop a nude. Do you know how many girls, I, I genuinely don't know if Mia does this, so like I'm not referencing Mia for her OnlyFans photos, but do you know how many girls, because they're just posting photos of themselves, could alter their body to look more Pause. appealing to the male gaze asterisk, or whatever asterisk, it is? Asterisk. Okay, go ahead. I'm not talking about for mass consumption. Okay. I'm talking about- Oh, from- One to one. Yeah, P to P. This is not a- this is not, you don't have permission to share this. Yeah. This is not something that's going out for many people and many opinions. We're talking mm -hmm. about one person who feels comfortable enough mm -hmm. and is an adult. To send a nudie. And has requested the, uh, uh, not even, has been given yeah. the authorization from the other party. Right. We're talking about mutual consent Mutual here. consent. But maybe, maybe they haven't seen it in person a lot. Maybe they're making a judgment right, call. Maybe right. this is like, you right. know, we're letting somebody in, which of course mm. is vulnerable. Is it okay to make things just a little more visually appealing in photo form? Listen, just my personal opinion, I think That's what that, this podcast is. Right, literally just all of my no, no, unsolicited no, no. Not, not personal plant. opinions. Fuchsia plant. What is do you pink? think? Fuchsia, what is this? That's, yeah, that's like a fuchsia pink. This podcast, once again, is not brought to you by it at all. Fuchsia pink? Okay, got it. That's okay. a fuchsia pink. Sorry. Um, I think that if my goal was to just conquer that person sexually, <laughs> that there's a world where like, I might do a little retouching. I want nothing more than to be conquered in that exact <laughs> capacity. <laughs> like you said that and I was like, oh, sign me up. Like, I think that if I truly did not give a shit about what that person thought about me, I, I mean, I guess it's an no, argument from both sides no, though. No, no, if you didn't care, you just send you a just fucking send it. nude. Yeah, you're so right. And also if you didn't care, you wouldn't send the nude in the first place. So like, yeah, you're, you're only right, sending right. it if you want them to go, ooh. I really don't know. I could argue on both sides, I guess. I think so too. I could argue on both sides. I believe. Yeah. Because here's my other thought with guys. Mm -hmm. If you were just making it look more appealing, but not necessarily changing the size. Like photo, like, like- um, Maybe smooth some things out. Like heal a pube. Heal a pube. Maybe you got an ingrown. <laughs> heal or maybe, pube. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like you, got a, if you got an ingrown pube and then you go on Facetune and, and just, uh, erase. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, think about it. That's, bas I, that's I, basically I, what Brian, that last martini at the bar is doing anyway. That's so true. Just erasing. And also like that ingrown might be gone by time you hook up. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They might, they'll, they'll never see this. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, you're altering something that is temporary. Like I think if you're making your ball sack giant, you know which what I mean? Is, like, which is what I would do. Of course, that would, would be the first thing that you alter. The, yeah, the ween would say that, but I would go in there. And, and just droop gonna, those balls. I want two grapefruits. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think that that would be shocking. Like anything that would be like altering yeah. the reality of what it actually looks like, where I think it's like, like I've definitely face tuned out a pimple. On photos that you share, but I'm talking, that's mass consumption. That's true, yeah, that's mass consumption. I'm talking about nudes one to one. Yeah. First thing you do when you wake up is to tell me how 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 nice of a graceful and beautiful sleeper I am, and that I don't thrash and or sweat it's, it's like during the night. Is that what it is? Is no, that the no, first no. thing you do when you wake up? I'm super curious to hear all the details about oh, those dreams of yours. My God, my movie like cinema dreams. Yeah, the ones with the really good plot lines. Oh man, the best plot lines. So if it's not that, is it checking up on your credit score? Uh, I didn't think those so. Those are equally as exciting. <laughs> well, time is here to do just that for you, but just the credit score portion. I wish I had time back in the day to help me out. Being up to date on your credit score is key to a stress-free life. Credit is such a huge part of being an adult. And while it may seem intimidating, Chime is the MVP. With your secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Building credit can be really hard to do when you're first starting out. Again, firsthand, I know this so well. It's so confusing and so intimidating. And that is why we love that Chime is here to help. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average, all of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start your credit charity today with Chime. Sign up only takes two minutes and does not affect your credit score. Get started today at chime.com backslash WT9. That's chime.com backslash WT9. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank, NA pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact of score may vary and some users' scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass ATMs and a 7-Eleven or any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Argue both sides. I really could. I feel the same way. Yeah. I. 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 I there's got to be people with 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 a little bit more experience in this uh, category. Let us know. I, Please report back based on your own personal choose, research choose, or research of others. Choose whichever uh, channel, whether it's a comment, whether it's a DM. Yeah. I want to hear from you. Or also, like, what if someone was like a little self conscious about like their nipple size and they just just made the nipple a little smaller See, now or that, bigger? Now that. I think that's that, the same thing I as making a penis balls, bigger or smaller. I think it also goes into the same category as like the grapefruit balls. I got to be honest. I'll, I've, I would have a harder time distinguishing my balls <laughs> size wise than I but think. But I think also balls. balls change size so dramatically. They don't change size. They just get closer and farther away from the body. That's what I'm saying. Right. It's not like a, it's not like your nose and ears that keep growing. Right, 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 right. Like the balls. Okay, the sack. The what sack if, changes. Yeah, what if? the penis or the balls like got bigger until you were like 25. Yeah. And then at 25, they that started was getting smaller form. the rest of, of oh, your life. Oh man. You, you know that, I think that the the age that men try and lock down a blood, like a lifetime partner would actually get younger. Right. Closer to 25. I also think this is a world where, can you imagine if every single time a dude did something creepy, mm -hmm. a centimeter gets taken off of his penis? That should absolutely be a fucking thing. I 100%. think so too. Or like if you like do something- Everybody starts off at, at, at 12 inches. 12 inches. <laughs> and it's like, by the time he gets to you, it's like, oh my God. Okay, but I'm also good. like, I think that there's a learning period where totally. guys- Th Listen, you get a few inches to, to you know, right, to, right, right. to learn. So most guys like, they learn, you know, I feel like guys in high school are just absolute pigs. You know what I mean? Oh. And not to say that that is okay, but like in I high would, school, they I probably lose out. a lot. Yeah. yeah. Right, 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 right. So just say everyone oh, goes any, back down to like give a geometry inches. class. It's like, how'd you find a way to weave that fucking statement in there, big guy? Oh, I think about all the amounts of times that I've seen a guy stick a pencil down like a girl's butt crack, especially when like low rise jeans were in style when we were in high right. school. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, we were, we were swimming like dolphins here. Yeah. Same wavelength. And we then, are not, and I, you I went, went, I went, then you went, went pencil like shaving into a butthole. <laughs> not pencil shaving, pencil, pencil shoving. Like a guy would just like try and throw a pencil down a girl's butt okay, crack. Okay, that's different than I'm going to walk up and make direct contact. And oh, no, 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 no. It'd be like if a girl is sitting a couple like seats ahead that a guy, and oh, it's you like could the see. Same thing, like throwing a piece of paper down like a shirt into the cleavage. I can't relate to that on any- So you're telling me it's more normal for me <laughs> to throw a pencil at a at a butt crack than throw a straw wrapper yeah. down someone's shirt? 
If you're telling me you've never crumpled up a straw wrapper and thrown it at somebody, hoping that it either went into their drink, their food. Oh, their, their I mean, yeah, that are, I'm just saying that I've never Drink, their had food, their cleavage, it's the same thing. You could do it with your mom, not a big deal. The way. Think about it. I think it's much less creepy to throw it in front of someone where they could see it. Yeah. And it's a piece of paper than a pencil going to into a butt crack. crack. <laughs> Also, you know what? These are the the one. This is another reason amongst so many others why low rise jeans should just stay so far in the past. Lauren, you know they're gonna come back eventually. Well, I, I've seen bitches be wearing low rise jeans, and I'm like, you know what though? There are some people that it, it's not low rise jeans just all together. It's low rise jeans and crop tops. That's right. what needs to not it's, come back. It's the Hollister, um, like it's, it's the Hollister where it's the whole like. Like, like, uh, uh, you remember you used to be able to see everyone's hip bones? Yeah. Always? Yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, I know that people prefer low rise jeans when they're wearing like normal shirts. And like, I totally get that. Whatever works for your body. I'm saying that I don't want the low rise jeans and the teeny tiny crop top to come back because I don't feel good in that. I actually actively feel terrible. You, uh, yeah, you've, you've voiced that concern. Oh, before. yeah, 100%. And so I think being able to like, like cinch at the waist with something that's high waisted is just much more flattering on my body personally. I, I'm i still not quite over the whole face tune and wean thing. That's like, to me- I'm stuck on grapefruit balls, to be honest. There's a very specific scene in We're the Millers when um, <laughs> yeah. that guy with the eyebrows has his well, balls. Well, could, by the way. You know exactly when I describe, say- Could describe you know, many people. You know when I say the guy with the eyebrows or we're with the Millers? But if you like, or were the Millers? At some point it was like, did you see a man walk through here? He had eyebrows. No, but this guy with the eyebrows, they're super arched and right. he, what was he just in? Uh, he was in- Speaking of arched eyebrows, I don't know if everyone can see this, but I my Botox um, from last mm, week is mm -hmm. still healing. I've got this bruise here. So um, odd, that's never happened before. In case anyone was wondering if I got in a fight, I did. With a fly. With a needle. And, with a uh, flea. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking about um, uh, pursuing charges. We'll see. Is that why you bailed on the photo shoot today? Because you're, you're bruised, you're busted yes. and bruised. And I couldn't find my poorly matched um, tinted Concealer. moisturizer yeah. to, to kind of cover it all up. But if I had, I would have just put it on the side of my face and called it a day. I mean, yeah, that's a little, that's a little spot conceal. You can do that. Just put it on one spot of your face? Yeah. Really? It's just a tiny bit. Like you would do like literally a tiny dab and blend it out with your finger. Like and a spoon? Like a what? Like a spoonful? No. Teaspoon. No. Your mini spoon. I, your little, lo I love my mini spoon. Your little mini crack spoon. Yeah, my little my little klepto mini yeah. spoon. Yeah. I want to be very clear, it's not a crack spoon. It's my mini klepto spoon that I saw. I am, um, uh, this is super on topic. So I saw people in the comments um, telling me that I'm wearing my ring on the wrong hand. And I do appreciate the yeah, enthusiasm. I have seen some comments about that. Two things. One, this it has nothing to do with us being engaged. I just happened to start wearing it a month or two before we got engaged. Two, this is an aura ring to tell me whether or not I am uh, getting off of my ass and walking around and sleeping well at night. Mm -hmm. I actually think also, it is- wait, isn't it on your right hand anyway? Right. Yeah, it's on your right hand. But like people are like, he's on the wrong hand. I'm oh, like- Oh, I see, I see, I see, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. This is not intended to right. serve as a, like, I don't want people knowing that I'm engaged. Come on now. <laughs> no, but for this, this has nothing to do with it. This is not representing being engaged whatsoever. Men get nothing for being engaged. Actually, it, this is just a, a one-way treat. But point is, this has nothing to do with with our engagement. Uh, I actually think it's hideous. I hate the way it looks, I know. but I like what it does for <sighs> me knowing whether or not I need to get up and do something with my life, or if I've been active. I have the aura ring in gold. But I love we, the aura ring. I love the, the aura ring. It's so amazing. But I literally only sleep with it now to track my sleep and not during the day because I don't like the way it looks. It's just so like I know that the next gen of the aura ring when it gets a little bit thinner I and a wait. little bit just like a little more sleek and skinny. I think I'll go back to wearing it during the day, but I just I just can't do it. Oh, I hate the way it can't looks. Can't do it. Yeah. I can't stand it. I can't, I can't I stand, stand it. it. But like, I I would never remember to put it back on at night if I didn't just wear it all the time. Yeah. So I wear it all the time. I would say I, I sleep with my aura ring about five nights of the week. <laughs> uh, I just thoroughly enjoy it. Like, we, like when we wake up and we compare results. Ugh, it's, it's so like, enraging. Let's do a comparison of last night. Cause like, you know, like, like, you know, when two people, like it's like, we've got the same bed, right? We've got the same cover, same sheets, same temperature, same noises. Same, same everything. Houses, yeah. And if we go like to same sleep- same environment. And fall, if we- We actually went to sleep at the same time last night. Yep. I think I fell asleep earlier than you though. Probably. So- Okay, so overall score, 79. Overall score, 83. Normally you're actually higher than that. Normally yeah. like our delta between our scores, it's much bigger. Yeah. Uh, total sleep, seven hours, 29 minutes. Seven hours, 49 minutes. Okay, okay. Time in bed, seven hours, 59 minutes. Eight hours and 28 minutes. Okay, love that for you. Sleep efficiency, 94%. 92. 
Oh, resting heart rate, 64 BPM. 64? Yeah, what's yours? 54. Did you almost die last night? I get down Did to you four, flatline? I get down to 49 often. I had really stressful dreams last night. Like I woke up being actively exhausted from my dreams, which Jeez. happens most okay. times, to be honest. Um, keep going. Um, restfulness, optimal. Mine was just good last night. Mm. Yeah. REM sleep, 40%, two hours, 59 minutes. <laughs> Uh, two hours and 40 minutes, 34%. Okay, deep sleep, I barely depth, sl depth slept at all. I barely <laughs> depth slept. Uh, 45 minutes, only 10% of my slumber was a deep sleep, which I hate that for me. Two hours. Jesus Christ, that's so whack. Oh my God. Uh, latency, 18 minutes. Uh, 18 minutes? Wow. And then my timing, pay so attention. Nice. Yeah, yeah, mine too says that as well too. Whatever. Um, I fell asleep at 12.50. I fell asleep at 1.13. I was oh. talking. You were talking. Yeah. I remember being like, this talk is kind of loud. I hope I can fall asleep. And <laughs> <laughs> You're like thinking about like, maybe I should complain. I think I'm gonna complain. You wake up. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. Is that, I was like, should I say something? Maybe to turn the line down? <laughs> and that's exactly what happened last night. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, that sounds about right. Anyways, so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in doing, um, hop on this ugly ring train and let us know what your scores look like. Oh, yeah, I love that. I love that for us. Um, what, what else was I gonna tell you? There was something else that I had, I had, I was saving for today, but- If you drink these peach remember. vibes fast enough, they make your face tingle. Yeah, truly though. Oh my God. The fact that I can drink 200 milligrams of caffeine now is the most insane character development for me in terms I of think, caffeine consumption. I genuinely think I could drink four or five of these. And be fine. Oh, I know I'd be fine. Oh man, but after, if I drink one within an hour, I'm cracked out. I, well, this is probably one and a half now. Jeez, yeah, because you chugged half of mine. I'm so sad about it. I, I can drink- uh, is that is that to just pump you up for your day on the couch while yeah. not being at the photo shoot? I'm not kidding. That's so nice. I could walk right now after after getting two hours of deep sleep. Yeah, and you know the other step six and a half or so, uh -huh. I could walk right now downstairs to the couch easily. Moose was sick this week. We had a lot of doggy drama this weekend. We had a lot of, of drama. We had a lot of doggy drama. Uh, it, actually, ongoing drama. Ongoing drama. Do you want to start with with um, the? I think I think we end with Moose. I think we we'll start with Diggy. So we got the first report card back. Yeah. So Our just for context. sweet little meatball. So we were in what in, intended to go today, correct? For no, our first training? No, was supposed to come home today for an hour. I was, I've been looking forward to it all week. So we had initially scheduled for Diggy to come home this week. And no, no, so, it, so basically essentially it's a four week training program, mm -hmm. but two times during the program, he comes to the house with Diggy so that we can start integrating training. Mm -hmm. And basically he trains us with Diggy in like our home environment. How long has Diggy been gone? A week? Two weeks. It's been two weeks. It's been two weeks. Damn. Painful every day, mm -hmm. every day. And so I've been looking forward to it literally since the first week that he's been gone because we set this date. And what did he say? Your son is dumb. No, <laughs> he's just he's just he a said, little behind in the curriculum. I'm not, kidding. I'm not kidding. The way that he said it, it it, it, it <laughs> literally was the first time that I went from like <clears throat> being in school where it was like I watched kids get put into okay, you guys are gonna go into this room for math, and <sighs> you guys are gonna stay in this room. The remedial room. Oh, that's a that's an insult to the word remedial. No, babe, that's so mean. So like, um. You know how you can like, when you start getting older, you can start just like electing to just do, like I'll do physics, but without the math. I'll do this without the, like, because like, oh, well, these kids are never gonna be able to learn these concepts because it yeah. requires this advanced thing. Like there's that level. And then there's the, okay, here's the thing that you need to do to be able to pass the GRE. Yeah. Currently, Diggy's working on getting up to the basic classes to be able to pass the GRE. It's not his fault though. He's literally starting at square one and he's seven. I know. I, listen, old dog's new, tr old dog babe, new twig. You know I love him to death. Yeah. If he stays dumb the rest of his life, so be it. Point is, it's looking like he won't be getting into Harvard. <sighs> I guess we can spend the college tuition fund that we started for him. I think we're gonna have to spend that on tutoring. More tutoring. Uh, uh, genuinely, yeah. if, if this was our child, we'd be starting to talk about like, okay, so I think we need to like pump up those extracurriculars. Yeah. We need to get them in some organizations, some 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 extra, mm -hmm. some club studies. Yeah. We've got to figure out maybe what trade. How to beef up the, the old yeah. resume. Yeah, because we're going to have to add some fat in there. <sighs> so anyways, Diggy got his home visit rescheduled because he's not quite ready yet. 
It makes me so, he basically, he referred to Diggy as an onion with lots of stubborn layers. Is it found, a sweet little onion meatball. Is it found a reactive or responsive or positive or intelligent layer yet? He did say that he's a potty champion. He's like, I pray. <laughs> and Diggy is a potty champion. So your dog hasn't peed on himself, which is great. Yeah, but you know, some dogs are- um... I, there's nothing that's more on brand for you than to have a- A meatball? A just absolute- Unit of a a sweet specimen. little meatball. Yeah, I know. So anyway, so Diggy has been falling behind in the curriculum, um, but he's trying his best. He's trying his best, babe. You know what though? It does make me feel um, like more confident in our decision to hire a professional for like a longer term boarding training than us trying to do it at home and just feeling like incompetent and we're like remedial trainers because yeah. obviously Diggy has his stubborn onion layers, yeah. and I'm glad that it's a professional that's doing it, not us trying to do it. Just wait till it's Moose, who is purposefully being a pain in the ass. Oh, Moose is like very strategically stubborn. Moose has what I call like like profiles. Oh, like every, it's it yeah. is shocking. But like you can't call Moose stupid because he literally like he knows exactly what he can get away with on a per person basis. It yeah. is it is truly so impressive. I wonder what like adopting a like an old police dog would be like. Because they've got to be wildly intelligent for, yeah. for in, in certain ways, but mm -hmm. also like really dumb with how to be a dog in oh, other yeah, ways. Yeah, 100%. I actually um, saw a TikTok say, Oh, really? And it was that- What's the app called? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and they still take their police dog to do like, obviously like fake versions of all the simulations. R really? Yeah, but- like they basically were saying that like, even though like he's older and has less energy, like he still needs to be like wildly stimulated, like right. more than like a regular dog. Otherwise he'd be and like- And also, yeah, he just, like, doesn't know what to do because like that was like their purpose for so long. So now they just do it for fun. That's so fun. For funsies. That's so nice. That's so nice. Do you think like, um, that's kind of like um, what we do when we go to escape rooms? Probably, yeah. yeah. You're so right. Yeah. Love a good escape, escape, escape. <laughs> Whoa. No, that was, no, no, no. Bring it. It's okay. Escape it. Whoa. Whoa. Escape room. Whoa, I threw an X in there. Yep. Yeah, there was an Xscape. That's oh, so nice. Oh man. Me. Xscape. I, okay. <laughs> um, I, so, I, that, so this is the diggy. That's the diggy side of things that have um, been progressing through our life. Meanwhile, Moose. Literally Moose on Saturday night, just all of a sudden out of nowhere. And I have a sixth sense for when Moose is gonna throw up that is so insanely accurate. Oh, Lauren could text me from a mile away and say it's happening. Moose is gonna throw up. I'm not, I've never seen someone who can I think it's clock a, I that I think it's more. a combination of motherly instinct, but also a combination of emetophobia. And when I tell you that Moose throwing up has been the most natural form of exposure therapy that I have no choice but to be exposed to, especially when I was a single mom, it, it truly, it truly is exposure therapy. And my sixth sense is so insanely accurate. So Saturday night, all of a sudden yeah. out of nowhere, Moose just yaps bleh. up his entire day. Yeah, just literally just bled. I've, I've never seen a more like, uh, almost like emotionless. It was just like bleh. Bleh. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of like a super drunk friend in the back seat of the car, just kind of like zoning out, doing and the just, wobbles and just bleh. Bleh. That's exactly what it was. And then, so that happened. And you know, dogs sometimes just throw up. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't Have alarming. Have you ever seen somebody like vomit in a car? Um, I one time was driving a car with someone barfing out the window, but that's about it. That's yeah. as close. I've seen someone just, just, just bleh. I was in the backseat of an Uber. I mean, it sounds like, it sounds like um, Zach Justice's story with his truck. And Jared. Speaking of, Zach Justice got hammered for the first time. What? Yeah. No. I was listening way. to their pod yesterday. <gasps> yeah. No shit. He just decided. Yeah, I'm just gonna drink. What? He decided I'm gonna drink eight drinks right now. Eight. And so then he spent the time, the rest of the, the rest of the day just vomiting. But yeah. Yeah. So will that be the first and last time that he does that? Unsure. We'll wow. find out. What wow, what a what a wild plot twist. Might say this weekend we might find out. Oh my god, true, true. Yeah. We're having a little B day, B day shenanigans for Jeremy. Um I, so that was Saturday night. And you know, sometimes dogs just, just yak out of nowhere. And so we're like, you know, if he eats a leaf and then sometimes it just comes back up. So whatever that happens, Sunday night, same thing. And I saw it, I could feel it again. Spidey senses tingling. I, once, and I'm not like kidding. a little drunk sorority girl, I got this dog's head into a mini trash can and it was the most efficient dog barf cleanup experience that I've ever had. <laughs> I, I was so proud of myself. She was proud of herself. She was over here just like, like holding back the ears. Holding his ears back. Yeah. 
So you could have a, a nice peaceful little yak. Have you ever stuck your fingers down somebody else's throat so they could puke? Absolutely not. Really? And I, yeah, one time Remy did that with Mia though, after a truth or drink when she was so violently drunk and Mia has no gag reflex. And like, people always say that, but you're like, okay, like, do you really have no gag reflex? She literally went into Leisha's kitchen and got like a kitchen utensil, shoved a spatula down her throat. And we really were like, you really have no gag reflex. That makes me feel icky. Yeah. It was it was shocking as much as it was impressive. I've done it before. Yeah, I mean- I couldn't do it to myself. Could never do it to myself. I would die. I would literally die. I, That's I would, my worst I would nightmare. rather die. I, absolutely not, but I could do it to somebody else. I could never do it. I don't think I could do it to you. I would chomp your finger off so fast. I would never, unless I was like so unconsciously blackout that I didn't know what was going on. I would never let you do that to me. Kentucky Lauren might. Kentucky Lauren might. Yeah. But that's a, that, I don't know. Yeah. That's a different specimen. Yeah, no, no, no she's that's different. A different yeah, specimen. By the way, I, listen, Kentucky Lauren's gonna do what she wants to do. So I might lose those fingers regardless. 100%. Sunday night, same thing. Moose, in yeah. the sorority girl, little trash can holding the ears back. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Monday, same thing, <laughs> except okay, for- We've had a fucking small mini trash can on our couch. <laughs> Just sitting there on the side of the cloud couch for a week now. It's become the decor. Uh, it's become the decor. And that's okay. It's kind of a cute one though. It's got like a little design not that on cute. it. It's not that cute. Trust me, no one wants to have a small mini trash can on hand uh, on their couch. Monday, same thing. He couldn't keep anything down, breakfast and dinner. Yeah. So we went to the vet on Tuesday um, and he got full body x-rays because they were convinced that there was something like in his digestive tract. And I was, I mean, like it had rained all weekend. So we hadn't really been outside. So he wasn't eating like random yard shit. He also is not the kind of dog that would like eat a thong or like something or like a wad of cotton balls or something that'd be blocking it. Mm -hmm. And so obviously I was like, yes, we have pet insurance. Like let's absolutely just do this. And you know, just in case, but- Shout out pet insurance. Pet insurance is gonna legitimately gonna fire drop. us. If, yeah, if they're they, gonna drop us. If they could drop us, it would have already happened. A hundred percent. We have spent uh, like between him and Diggy, it's Tens crazy. of thousands. Uh, it's insane. Highly recommend as soon as you get a dog getting pet insurance, it is worth every single dollar. Yep. Literally having one accident pays for pet insurance. Yep. Cause shit is $800 in x-rays for an upset tummy. X-rays came back totally clear. 800, we, we get a deal this time? Truly, we did blood work, we did poop test and um, all of that came back clear. And they basically are like, it, this literally happened with Diggy as well too, is like we're having yeah. like a pancreatitis potential flare up. So now they're both on special diets. And I just feel as if this is how dogs have progressed from being wolves in the wild to now being on special to prescription diets. To be fair, diets. the bull terrier was never a wolf in the wild. No, bull terriers were never a wolf in the wild. No. No, they no, were no. they were like an army sidekick dog though. For what, 20 minutes? General Patton? Yeah. Had a bull terrier? Yeah. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. There's lots of pictures of General no, Patton with his little bull terrier. So did Mark Jacobs. That is very true. Yeah. Uh, uh, Neville. Yeah. That's his name. Neville Jacobs. Neville, Neville Jacobs. Neville Jacobs flies on jets. Neville's getting old. We're not even gonna talk about it. I know. We're not even gonna talk about it. He's okay. So anyways, Moose had a weekend and we canceled. We like didn't go to a birthday party because he was unwell and it would, it's been, it's been Moose being sad, although he is very dramatic and can be very stubborn when he is actually sick. It is so heartbreaking. He gets the shakies. He gets the shakies and it's so sad. And like Moose loves food more than anything in the end. Like he would trade us for a crumb in a, in 10 milliseconds. Like there would not even be a point of decision-making because the decision is already- a crumb to. on the TV. He, he would, would trade us. He would step on my esophagus to hundred percent. If it was your last breath, he'd <laughs> step on you. Yeah, exactly. He would do that. And so knowing how hungry and sad he was, was even more heartbreaking. Yep. Because Moose parting with his meal in any capacity is his worst case scenario. I, without question. Without question. So that's been our dog drama for the last uh, couple days. And I'm not coping well, if you're wondering. No, she's not. <laughs> no, you're not. But you know what? I think this is good for us. Why? Because we need to be ready when when he gets back. Yeah. To jump right into making sure that he knows how to be a good little onion with us. He is an onion, a sweet onion meatball. Yep. Gail makes meatballs that have onions in them, so it just I don't like onions in my meatballs. Well, now we do. You better you better swap that palate real quick because we Remember, have eat we have what? I'll eat them. Diggy? No. No. No, Diggy. Honestly, I think it would be a really uh, lean cheeseburger. I don't know about that. He would be a cheeseburger, but I don't know if he'd be very lean. He's, he's strong boy. He's a strong boy. Strong boldly. Oh, that was tough. Strong, I was thinking of strong. Yeah, anyway, really. uh, so yeah, so that's, um, that's our update. That's our update. Um, so I'm turning 31 this weekend. Oh my God, isn't that wild? Fact, by the time everyone sees this, I'm 31. You're 31. Yeah. 
Why is it never? I got. Oh, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but I did get you something that was really, really cute. It's not really a gift. It's like kind of a gift, but I'm very excited about it. So next podcast, we can talk about it, but I'm really excited and giddy. I'm picking it up tomorrow. Okay. Surprise! It's a third ball terrier. I was going to say, <laughs> is it Diggy? Got it. Oh, imagine Diggy could come home for the birthday party. That'd be great. Oh, that'd be so nice. Except for I wouldn't talk to literally anyone. I would just sit with Diggy the entire Diggy. night. Diggy. Diggy. Just pet his nose. Just pet his little snoot. Oh, I miss him so much. I know. Um, so Jeremy's birthday party this weekend, we're just doing a cute little close friends thing. Yep. Um, you were just completely uninterested in having any kind of birthday shenanigan. I, 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 I'm I, over it. <laughs> yeah, over it. I guess like 31, do you feel any type of way about 31? Um, I feel some type of way about just the year in general, but it doesn't really have much to do with my age. Okay, how do you feel about the year in general? I think it's gonna be a building year. Like it's a building year. And this brings us, this is a great to go into our next, um, um, into our next topic. I, I'm a professional. <sighs> I feel like this year I'm taking some risks. I'm taking some career risks. I'm mm. making, not anything crazy. Like on the YouTube front, everything is staying consistently basically the same. But I think on some consistently like- Consistently basically. Consistently basically the same. But I think on some like other career fronts and just like expanding other areas of my career, I'm taking some risks. And I was just thinking about how I haven't taken a risk in such a long time. Like even the podcast, like that was something that I think made sense and was like an extension of like what I wanted to do. And it made sense and felt like a really easy transition. And I feel like we had enough general resources to start a podcast that was like not, it didn't, it didn't feel like a crazy risk. I mean, the downside was pretty low. The downside was pretty low, right, exactly. And it wasn't like a crazy startup cost to get started. And like we had easy people to like pull into our team for this. And it just didn't feel like that big of a risk. Um, but I'm taking some more career risks. And I'm just thinking about how I haven't really done anything that felt like a big jump into any kind of like new anything. This is so vague and annoying. And I know people are like, okay, well like bitch fucking- well, what you, what yeah, well, yeah, 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 and it is. Um, but I've got a few endeavors that are on the horizon that I'm excited about. Well, um, thank you for that generally vague, basically whatever um, mm -hmm. exp description, but I guess so knowing what they are, but, uh, but we'll respect your uh, interests in keeping things private for now. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to get your take on what you're most uncomfortable with. I think it's doing things that I don't have any any like guidance on, like not having an expert in the area to like use and like lean on as like a mentor or someone who can help provide you with resources, I think is really hard. But did you have that last time you took a risk? I mean, I, I feel like, I mean, I can't remember like the last like actual big risk that I took. Oh, well, what do you think it is? Um, maybe getting a second dog. <laughs> 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 yeah, but like- you... Like career-wise though, like I genuinely don't know. Cause like even with Craftopia and like hosting a show, like obviously that was like something very new and something that I'd never done before, but it was an opportunity that kind of just fell into my lap and I was excited about and made sense. And also is like already in a niche area of expertise that I have. Right. Like I could talk about random craft shape forever. Like my base knowledge of that is so uh, just like expansive that I, ex is that a word? Expansive? Yeah. yeah. It kind of sounds like expensive, but like expansive. I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, wow, wow. I just never made those connections until right now. But you might have invented that word actually. Expansive? Yeah. <laughs> you know what, that's the thing. <laughs> Moving forward now, it's not that, oh, that's not a word. It's I invented that word. I invented that word. Yeah. Like Sagu. We're reframing. We're reframing. Yeah. Yeah, great new perspective. Um, but yeah, I just feel like I haven't taken any big career risks. So I'm excited to go on this journey and not know what the fuck's gonna happen. And also like getting into business with people that I have never worked with before is always a risk. Yep. And we'll see what happens. And you know what, if this business completely flops, I'm sure we'll have a whole bunch of podcast content to talk about. Well, to that end, I mean, do you feel like you are someone who deals with risk well? Or have you dealt with risk well in the past? Dealt. I made up, the, I invented that word, dealt with. Um, I think that because I'm such a type A planner, mm -hmm. I think that- Oh, really? I, <laughs> really? Is that- <laughs> You do that? Interesting. Yeah. I think that because I'm such a planner, I'm someone who is able to mitigate a lot of risks that are involved with taking a big risk. You know what I mean? Like I can plan and organize and prep for what might come out of taking a risk. 
almost just died. Oh my God. See, look at the, like the thought of taking a risk has got me gasping for air. Right. Um, okay. So knowing that about yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think that in tandem with being someone who can spiral with that, like the drop of a hat is an interesting- What hat? Juxtaposition for me. What are the me. looking at a dog? <laughs> Do we have pictures with it? Can I see it? So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay. So I then did you, you reached out to, you reached out to the Tillys, correct? For what? Advice oh, on this? Oh, oh, oh yeah. So essentially like b this being kind of like something that's like very present in my current life, mm -hmm. I was really curious to know what the biggest risks people have taken in their life thus far have been. And I got some really interesting and inspiring answers. That you have yet to share with me. I know that I'm really excited. Yeah, you about, made me wait. I know. Well, okay, we didn't record two days in a row. And so I've just been sitting on these. Okay, so the first one, these are these are truly like all over the place in terms of um, topics. Mm -hmm. And what I think is good to show that taking risks is great. And sometimes there's payoff, sometimes it's not, but usually it's a learning experience. This one is my favorite. Okay, so um, Val, she signed up for Hinge at the very beginning of when we started the podcast and talked about Hinge. She signed up for Hinge based on our recommendation and met the love of her life. What? Yes. We? We did that. We inspired that. I we, think we recommended that. We own at least a portion of that relationship, right? If we don't get to ordain this wedding between Val and her partner, mm -hmm. I, will be, I will be violently upset. Boyfriend of Val. I don't know if it's boyfriend, girlfriend. I'm not sure that they, they didn't say. Okay. The love of their life. Okay. Essentially. I love that. And so that's the biggest risk they took. I know that like getting on a dating app truly like can feel like a wild risk because you're really putting yourself out there. See, that's the difference between men and women right there. I, although I'm sure that some men feel like there's a big thing to like start a profile. Yeah. I think dudes are just so much more uh, familiar with mm. or are less uncomfortable. I'm not saying comfortable, but less uncomfortable okay. with the idea of transactional failure like that. Yeah. But they're like, ah, let me throw up the same fucking four pictures that I've used for, you know, mm. last seven years. And, and one of them's for sure holding a fish. Give it a whirl. Two are holding a fish. Jesus. That was an, that was an auto no for me. I swipe no one every guy I saw holding a fish. With or without fish? Yeah. It, wouldn't it be nice if there was AI who you could just tell them what your, like they could watch you swipe for a hundred and right. then they would do the next 900 for you. That would be so good. Is that a business but idea? You know what? Hinge had so many filters to begin with that I'm surprised that there was a fish or no fish like filter option for filtering out dudes. True. Um, so that was one of them. And I I was so excited do about you, it. By the way, do you remember when dating apps like first start, like came out? No. I do. Cause as Tinder and Snapchat, like hit my college about the same time. Really? Yeah. I remember being in college and being like, like all the guys in the room would be like, should we just all set up accounts right now and just sw start swiping? Let's <laughs> just start swiping. Yeah. And, like, and then like, you know, you would match with one. And right. then they're like, yo, I got to match with Sammy. It's like, I just got to match with Sammy. Oh shit. And then you both see Sammy at the next frat party. Yeah. And you walk up and you say, you hussy. Mm. How could you? Hussy? What does hussy mean? H-U-S-S-Y. Look it up. I feel like I, I like have a general idea. That's, like, I think what, that's what my mom would call. Like, like she would, she would never use the word. Um, oh. <gasps> a girl or woman who behaves in a disrespectful or inappropriate way, or who has many casual sexual relationships. I said Donna Sammy. would so say hussy. She would say hussy. She would say hussy. She would, hussy sounds worse. Like hussy sounds oh, yeah. like, so, like, like if somebody it, called bad. you up. If someone walked up to you and just clearly said, your behavior reminds me of uh, of, of one of Hussy, Hussy descent. Hussy X? Yeah, yeah. Hussy S? Yeah. Esk? Esk. It's, it's giving Hussy. It's giving Hussy. <laughs> I'm gonna be, I think that I would be like, what did you just say? If I said it's giving Hussy, I immediately would just confirm a thousand rumors. A hundred percent. Okay, so this girl, Katie Bo. Hi, Katie. I think that we need to be friends immediately because her two that she submitted, um, I laughed at both of them. Wait, and wait, I, congrats, Val. Uh, yeah, congrats, Val. I love that for her. That's so exciting. So I- Could Val be a guy? Maybe. Yeah. Actually, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Based on the demographics of our pod listeners, I'm gonna make an educated guess and say no, but not to say that Val could not be a guy's name. I'm not willing to make such a quick judgment. So I laughed at both of these responses individually and realized they're from the same person. And both of my reactions were just like, this is me. I need to be friends with this person immediately. Um, okay, so first one. The let me, I guess they type in all caps no. and are hyperbolic about things mm. that probably don't deserve that reaction. Let me read these to you and you will immediately <laughs> understand. Okay. okay, so her biggest risk, one of them putting a hot pan in the sink on top of my $2 plastic target plates obviously did not pay off. That's something I would absolutely do. That is so aligned with my personal preferences and beliefs. Uh, but like would do it not thinking about- Yeah, the, the consequences. The immediate- Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. okay and the next adopting. Wait, wait, a- I'm not sure if she cracked the pan or melted the, the target oh, or did sure both. For sure melted the target. But then also the pan would probably have to go because then you melted the plates onto the bottom of the pan and wouldn't be able to put it on the stove. But you know you can pan. also crack like a pan by putting a really hot pan under cold water. You can crack it? I thought that was only with glass. I think pretty much any hard, sur- for sure glass. But I think that's how you like, like wow. anything you like rapidly expand or mm-hmm. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure. And I did feel chemistry. So maybe don't listen to me, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty sure that's why you don't okay. put anything underneath like a cold, cold water. temperature. Yeah, immediately. Okay. And then her next one, adopting a pot belly pig and letting her live in my house. My dream. Is this you? Did, this is me, right? Literally, I read these and I was like, "This is just." Did I submit these? Did when I, I tell write you these? That, that, that those are two things that if we also kind of do have two little pot belly pigs. That we live do in our have house. two pot belly pigs. Yeah, one currently. One currently. Yeah. Uh, why would you say that? And one kind of emaciated one because he won't stop puking. He literally, no, he's a puking also, pot belly pig. I feel like we didn't. A we didn't, A puking pot. A PPBP. Just pot belly. <laughs> Moose is doing much better, by the way. I feel like we didn't Moose we didn't fine. follow up yet. He's also he's think he's fine yeah. too. Um, okay, so this one, these are these this, this is a little more inspiring. So Hubs and I quit our jobs to start our own business. Best decision ever. There was a lot of that of people being like, I fucking hated my job. It was horrible for mental health. I started my own business and now I'm so much happier. Well, I think COVID did a great job of being like, yeah, hey, absolutely. you know, you're gonna be in the same house for the foreseeable future. Now's the time. Give it a run. Now is the absolute time. And do you think that most couples can start businesses together? No. I think so. I I agree. I yeah. think that most couples would be foolish to do mm-hmm. so. I think so too. However, the ones that can, I more power to you. Yeah, hundred percent. Look at us. Look, Look at, at us. us. Uh, this one uh, gives me stress hives. Just reading it, cutting my hair seven inches the morning of my wedding, of her wedding. Why? That seems like an unnecessary risk. So when girls chop a lot of hair like that, typically it's associated with some kind of like emotional distress. Thanks. Not not always, Thanks, Brittany. but sometimes. Brittany started that. Brittany started that. Yeah. Or like, unless like it typically it's associated with some kind of emotional distress. And so this makes me a little nervous. Um, and overall, that's just like, if I chop seven inches off my hair. Uh, not that I don't want to talk about this because I do have a lot to add. I want to go back to the, the husband and wife thing. Okay. One, we want, we want updates. We want to hear how it's going. Mm-hmm. But two, part of the risks that we might be thinking about We'd be starting one more business together this year. True. So. uh, (laughs) (laughs) That's my business partner. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's what my brain sounds like most of the day. (laughs) That's what mine sounds like with that Adderall. And then I go, wait, what? What was I doing? I forgot. (laughs) (laughs) So Karina, I hope that you loved your wedding photos after having such a drastic change. Yeah, let's fuck, send send some URLs. We wanna see these things. A lot of people um, do like test hair and makeup. And so I wonder if she did test hair and then her hairstylist showed up that day and was like, bitch, what the fuck? Well, somebody would have had to cut it. Probably if it's the same day. You're so right, who chopped it? I mean, some people are lucky enough to have like a hairstylist in their friend group. Like, I wish that we had a roster that was like, we have Nurse Maggie who I've texted before. Right. We have your friend who's a vet who we've also sent pictures of like Moose's poop to before. Yep. Um, we don't have a hairstylist though, who's like a tight, tight friend. Nope. Um, there's just like, I feel like we could, we could like, like your tech support, Jeremy, and I feel like you've done a great job TSJ. of offering that TSJ to yeah. other people. Oh, I. I, I gotta be honest. I think my friends are a little bit behind in the value added category sometimes. Mm, yeah. 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 Um, okay. So that's Karina. Um, I love this one. Elizabeth said that she told almost every crush that I've ever had that I liked them. No regrets. That's bold. <sighs> that is so bold. Also, uh, I wonder like- That's misguided. That's misguided. What <laughs> constitutes as a crush? Cause I feel like sometimes you have like fleeting ones that are just like a couple days. And then sometimes I feel like we've got big ones. I also think that, that um, women are more prone to the ick Oh my God, I can get the ick immediately. Yeah. And so yeah. there's a lot of risk mm-hmm. from, and this is, you know, just what I'm hearing. Right. As someone who uh, identifies with or can even relate to uh, men in hindsight, and mm-hmm. I hear what a guy does and then what that what that re- response kind of elicits. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, he's so hot. I love the way he does. I love the way. And then like he does like one little fucking thing. And then I saw him put on chapstick, immediate ick. And the crush when I, gone. But when I put on chapstick, you knew I was the one. Yes. It's Shania Twain. Shania Twain. Still the one. Still the one. Still the one. Um, but no, that's really interesting. And I think that there are times where that this is inspirational to be more bold with like being forward about your feelings. 
would not be me. Well, I think that like- Would not be me. I think there's also like a little, like a level of, um, if you've never been able to be that person before, you almost have to like become that person for a little bit. See if that is what you needed to like get over the hump. Mm -hmm. It was like, it's not something like every single time I feel any feeling, I'm going to tell someone immediately, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you might do that until you go, okay, maybe that's not helpful in some scenarios. But like, if you've never been able to do that before, maybe 2023 is the year. 2023 is the year of yeah. the thicky dumpy and telling your crush that, that you, that you like that. I can't wait. Um. <clears throat> hey, I like you. Did you? You know, this is on topic. I, some people are like, we got engaged, but that was like the same thing. I don't feel that way. I've had more fun with you the last month than I ever yeah, have. Yeah, I feel the same way. Some people are like, yeah, nothing changes. But I, I feel that. like, yeah, I agree. But also I have been engaged before and it, it didn't feel all that happy immediately. Yeah. So- This feels, this feels nice. Yeah, it feels pretty nice. It's so nice. So I'd like to say that like, maybe this is not as common or maybe it is. Yeah. But it um, feels pretty good. I feel like- I feel pretty good. I literally just tweeted and this is so violently cheesy. And that's exactly what I said on Twitter that like putting my engagement ring on is one of my favorite parts of the day. That's so nice. <laughs> that's so nice. And like, it's not getting less exciting every single day. That's very good. Yeah, one month in. Um, uh, it's gonna be there for a while. Yes. Um, okay, so getting divorced after being married for less than a year and Ooh. they were together for nine years See, prior. Not, but like to me, I don't know that's terrible. Yeah. I'm, I'm so hopeful yeah. that that risk turned out to be one that they're glad they made. I think so. I yeah. really think so. Well, I think they're, if they're writing it in. Also like this might be something where they thought that like getting engaged and getting married would solve some of the problems. I mean, you see that all the time with people yeah. trying to solve like problems with babies or marriage or whatever. And yeah. like maybe they did that and realized, oh, that didn't quite solve our problems and we're gonna part ways. And not to be the salesman in the room, but mm -hmm. if I, this is my one issue with, I think, well, my one issue. This is, I think, one of the biggest uh, perspective issues. And sometimes like, I think people will go, oh my God, nine years and then one year married. And mm. then it was like all that time wasted. And I look at that and I go, well, maybe the risk was getting married. Mm -hmm. And once they got there, they realized that although they had spent nine years together, just because you spend nine years with someone mm -hmm. doesn't mean you want to spend nine more. 100%. And so it's like, there's gotta be a world where like, at some point in time, you're probably pretty happy. And maybe that time's passed. Right. And so, yeah, you took a risk to kind of like hopefully fix the issues or mm -hmm. hopefully get to where you wanted to be. But when you got there, you realized, oh, now that we're here, we realized this was not the fix. We should grow and go our own way. 100%. Like that's not a complete failure. No, not at all. I also think that too, like when that happens, I'm sure that she learned a folk ton in nine years. I'm sure that he or, or her partner as well. Also, yeah, totally agree. Jillian said that she moved to a new state got a new job mm -hmm. away from her entire family alert mm. or away, away from her entire family. Uh, but spoiler alert, she's moving back. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. I, I totally agree. And like, when I tell you that I saw so many of like this kind of response that were on both sides being yeah. like, I moved across the country. I moved to a brand new state, not knowing anyone. And it's the best decision I ever made. And some people being like, it wasn't for me. And I moved back. I, I think everyone should move away once. I moved across the continent. I mean, I can't imagine what I'd be doing had I listened to any number of the people who told right. me I was fucking insane right. for moving to Los Angeles without much of a plan whatsoever. Right, 100%. I mean, I had a plan. And, and look at me now. <laughs> Donna's favorite thing yeah. for you to say She's to finally given up though. It's your fits. I She's feel finally like given up. When you guys start like inching towards that conversation about how like that, I I, I try and find my, the, the closest exit of the room. I've noticed she's um, backed off ever since she, um, she noticed that all of her plane tickets out here were in first class. Mm. I think I've noticed she's started Now that to, she's got like door to door service to yeah, the yeah, like when, when, yeah. the, when the black car yeah. pulls up to her house and uh -huh. takes her and mm -hmm. then brings her back. Those comments have started to really dwindle. slow their roll. <laughs> yeah, which is, I just think maybe it's, it's wildly convenient. Uh, Talia said that she left her corporate job after 15 years in the industry to start yeah. a business with my best friend. Go off Talia. Come on Talia. We want, we want updates. I know, seriously. I would love to know more about the businesses that the Tillys own. Oh my God, yeah, that's such a great, yeah, yeah, I would love that. Please let us know in the comments down below. Or DMs. Or Which DMs, yeah. But I, I think that, I think you're right. I think that COVID and having like everyone's life turned upside down yep. was such a um, breaking point for a lot of people in their Agreed. corporate job. Agreed. Uh, okay, here we go. I moved for a job across the country in a remote place knowing no one, totally worth it. Chloe. I, I, I think that the, 
Um, I don't think this is gender specific by any means. Sometimes to become the person that you've always wanted to be, mm -hmm. you have to separate yourself from the person you've always been. Damn, that shit was deep. That was no matter all Jeremy. That was no matter all Jeremy. <laughs> 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 no, it's like I, I, the the person or the even the, the, the way I was perceived by others, yeah. even if they forgot it, it's like. I think, you know, like, you know, like how, like sometimes like the imposter syndrome is just like, we'll, we'll be there. Even uh -huh. if you're not someone who struggles with it, it's like mm -hmm. you go back and you're with people who know a different version of you and mm -hmm. you almost remember, or you have, or you remember what you think you remember yeah. of everyone's perception of you. And it's like, I think it really messes with your self worth, self uh, insert word that I want here. It's like it, just, it just messes with the like, like introspective perspective that's not even maybe even real. Totally. I think also too, when you move somewhere new, like you have the chance to have a fresh start, not only from like an introspective perspective, mm. but like you're just able to just start fresh. And when you meet new people, you also get the chance to start fresh with new perceptions of how yeah. they perceive. It's yours to fuck up or yours true. to take advantage of. That's and like, true. cause there's some Good people point. that I, I grew up with that if you put them in a room with me today and they come up to me, I, I don't care what they said or what they did. I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. And like, there's only so many people that I feel all that polarized by. And I just don't ever want to deal with them again. 100%. Um, I have a crazy one and I'm not gonna give the name to this because I don't want to out them just in case. Okay. Okay, so they haven't taken this risk yet. Okay. Uh, well, maybe. Well, maybe. But maybe now it's today. I, well, no, I don't think so. Okay, so haven't taken the risk yet, but I just might be the runaway bride. I had a revelation last night and I'm not ready. Okay. That's all the information I have. And I immediately started sweating thinking about that. Okay, so, all right. I'm thinking that if assuming the wedding's not already passed, yeah. right? Like this is a good time to have this, a great time to have thought about this with a long time ago. The next best time is today. My issue is that Runaway Bride is so vividly associated with um, Sex and the City when Carrie Bradshaw gets left at the altar by Mr. Big. And it is the most heartbreaking scene ever where I guess it'd be more the opposite. He's like runaway groom. So I, I like, I wonder if she's thinking that Runaway Bride in the sense that like, she's gonna call off the wedding beforehand, hopefully, and maybe get probably not her deposits back, but like maybe logistically wise, it'll be okay. Let me be clear. Or at the altar, yeah, you get no money back. Is that what you're gonna say? No, 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 let me be clear. You getting no money back for in exchange for not getting married to the wrong person is the best deal. That's true. You'll ever make. Maybe she needs to hear that. I just want everybody to know. Yeah, maybe she needs to hear Any that. Any dollar that you spend in a relationship that uh, didn't work out, yeah. don't try and get that dollar back. I think out of respect for like, maybe the people who might be at your wedding, maybe make this call before you actually end up at totally. the altar. That's the only thing. Yeah. Like, the only thing you owe people is uh, the truth. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you need to divulge all of what's going on, but like mm -hmm. you do owe people the courtesy of, hey, your time is important to me, just like it always has been. Yeah, absolutely. Therefore, I want to let you know that this isn't happening anymore. Unless you're just going to throw a big ass party and they can still come and drink and eat and it's going to be like a fun time since you've already paid for it, but maybe there's just not a serum. I don't know. Anyways, girl, I am, I, you are in our thoughts and prayers and- Yeah, uh, I, think, I think she needs to take this to the people that she's closest with. Yep. And be like, am I crazy? Am right. I insane? Am I, crazy? I'm gonna, I, I feel- I'm feeling. Revelation sounds like a really big kind of like realization moment. And it sounds like a make or break type of situation that maybe she realized is. Also, if she's having this kind of moment right now, it's hard to undo a revelation. We want follow-ups. <sighs> Immediately. Yeah. Please. Um, but when you're ready. This is um, truly so relatable, I think for a lot of people. Um, this is a big serious one. Sailor said, taking a shit in a public toilet. I know so many people that can't poop in public. And this is a person named Sailor or they are a sailor? Uh, it's like Taylor, but with an S. Mm, sailor. Sailor. Got sailor. it. Sailor. Uh, so that's a risk? Yeah, that's a risk. Taking a shit in a public. Yeah, like, I know like, a like lot of people. What? Yeah, basically. I know a lot of people that can't poop in public. Like so poop shy? Poop shy. B because of the germs? combination of someone hearing the germs, just like not being in. I also know people who have to get fully butt ass naked to poop. Do you just want to call him by his name? No, nope, that's okay. But like, I understand the risk here. I can't relate. I can poop literally anywhere, but I understand that people Did have you... a lot of poop anxiety. 
Have you ever dated somebody who needs to get naked while they poop? <laughs> yeah, fucking you the other day. Uh, yeah, yeah no, <laughs> I did. I, yeah, I got so hot. Butt ass naked. I, I got so hot. I was like, everything, everything touching me needs to leave. If I could have, if I could have stopped the toilet from touching me, I would have. Like, Just, if I could have been in free fall for yeah, that, I yeah. would have done it. Oh. That would have been more comfortable for me. That's so nice. Um, so the the thing I do think that we should all try and strive for mm -hmm. is be a little bit more Japanese with our bathrooms. Oh my God. I've never had a better experience than the Tokyo bathrooms, the public toilets, all of them, literally between the bidet, the nice like peaceful music where you can literally choose the soundtrack that you want to go to the bathroom to, not even just for poos, but just for like the public privacy. Bidets. Public bidet, I don't know how I feel about that. I totally agree. But like, just like generally being able to play like rainforest sounds while you're going to the bathroom so you don't have to hear See, other people. I would people. 90s hip hop. Nah, it wasn't an option. It was all pretty like ambient music. No, no, no. I want Tupac and Biggie. Mm. Excuse me, but listen, if you're gonna like spend 75 seconds with some of the greatest music of all time. That's true. I'm, I'm coming to that bathroom ready to go. That's true. This is uh, this is from Caitlin and I relate to this one. Hi Caitlin. I, hi Caitlin. And this is also, I feel like a little related to pooping in public for some people. We can probably move on from the pooping in public. Thing, You'll but. understand in a second. Gambling if Starbucks put oat milk in my coffee or if my lactose intolerance go act up. I relate to this literally every day that I get Starbucks with oat milk. So I get a skinny vanilla latte made with oat milk. I'm like, today could be the day that someone got the milks mixed up. Out of curiosity, you know how like they have like, uh, you can test your cocaine for fentanyl. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They really should have little strips for like- Dairy is, testing? Is, is oat or not? Yeah, is dairy I know. or is not? Is dairy or not? I, I is that would, a thing? That's I, gotta be. That's that. A great business idea that we need to trade back and patent sprinkle, right? There's like, even like it's a, it's like sugar, but Tasteless. like the sugar, the sugar becomes like purple if it's good, pink if it's not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do we just come up with a, like a business idea that right now? That is a business idea that I would love Wild to Wild till nine, do. coffee, dairy tasting? Dairy, dairy indicator. Yeah. Dairy indicator. Um, I love this one. Getting a dog in college, it paid off for my mental health. I think the dog's name is Cole. Cole? C-O-A-L. Of course it is. Cole. Oh, I, w I hope more than anything that dog is in Kentucky. I can tell you. I bet it's in Kentucky or West Virginia. Pennsylvania would be my last guess. Okay, okay, please hold, please hold. Stand by. Oh, it's coleslaw and butter. Well, wait, hold on. Coleslaw would not be C-O-A-L. It is, it is. And Allie says that she invented it. C-O-A-L, slaw and butter. Where, where does Allie live? Um, hmm. Oh, butter is a husky. Yeah. Okay, so somewhere where they have, hang on, please hold. Um, okay, so near a lake, let me do some investigative work here. Lake Near a lake, okay, Minnesota. Okay, hang on, please hold. Lando Lake? Mm, some hiking. Okay, so I would, I would sort of guess somewhere north of Missouri. Hang on, hang on, I'm looking. For, oh wait, hang on, I see a graduation. Missouri, wow. Wow. Mizzou, what are we talking about? Is it yellow and black? No, it's green, S and T, Missouri S and T. Does that stand for anything to you? Secular neurobiological. Mm -hmm. S and T residential life. I got another. That's where Cole lives. Okay, shout um, out Cole. Well, yeah. We just outed her. Cole is Cole white adorable. Oh. Oh my God. Okay, Cole is 60% Great Pyrenees, 12.5% Australian Cattle Dog, 12.5% Chihuahua, 12.5% Breed Group, Sporting. <laughs> it reminds me of my own DNA test. The last 12.5% they're just like mutt. Yeah, mutt. Anyways, I Cole? love that. That is, I, I would have 100% gotten a dog in university, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We had a lot, I think we had more dogs in America in, in universities than you guys did. I think so as well. Yeah, so. we had like, cause like the sorority girl well, with also a golden. Like you like oh. live in houses. Like you guys live in full ass houses. Like that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so anyways, those are the risks. Those were the the highs and lows of the biggest risks that the Tillies have taken and, yeah. and inspiring. Yeah. What I've learned is that I think that I too should add another pot belly pig that I will be picking up for Jeremy's birthday tomorrow. And then I should throw a hot pan on some plastic plates and just see what happens. Well, I haven't talked about this. Roll the dice. Well, I haven't talked about this before, but we always save the best for last. But since, uh, uh, and this is a story we'll go into detail at a later date, okay. um, I am no longer working uh, my typical nine to five job, which was crypto.com oh. and have not for quite some time, there are new ventures to come. We're allowed to say this now? Yeah. 
Bullshit. Well, we're allowed to say what I just said. Okay, got it, got I'll, it. I'll, a I'll, single I'll, statement. I'll give more details eventually. Wow. Yeah, so. Stay at home, Jeremy. I just want it to be very clear. Has been thriving. Uh-huh. And Stu, Billy on the photo shoot. And with that, Latvia, we love you. Make sure. And if you can give me any birthday gift in the world, it would be to show me pictures of what you and your pets look like in fucking delight gear <laughs> when it comes out. I can't wait. Beyond I'm that, so excited. Latvia, it's been great. 1.9 million of y'all have been wonderful to hang out with mm-hmm. once again. Mm-hmm. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye.